if I kept going the way I was going, I'd be dead now. It's a depressant, but I felt like it gave me energy. Like I was like ready to go. If I had a drink in hand, I was like, yeah, let's rock on. Let's do it. My daughter moved out. Um, it's hard work. I mean, that's the is. thing. Like getting sober is not easy. Everything is hard. You got to put in the work yeah. for everything. Yeah. You know, everything that you have to put in the work, you have to get uncomfortable. Yes. It sucks, but you got to go through it. I really appreciate you being here. I have not been able to leave a female on camera with me. Well, thank you. And this I think is huge for me. <laughs> you. And I think it's going to bring a lot of perspective to a lot of people that, like, you can help. I mean, almost a decade. Yeah. Amazing. You are eight years sober from alcohol. Like, what's your why? Well, honestly, that when I came to the the point to actually stop drinking, I was... I was pretty far gone. I was really bad off. Like almost um, rock bottom? It was definitely as bottom as I wanted to go. Um, I literally, if I kept going the way I was going, I'd be dead now. There's just no doubt about it. I was, I, I was pretty bad. I was not eating. I wasn't sleeping. I was just getting up. I tried to have a drink just to feel better I was it was that was my it, it took a while though I lived like that for a little bit but. so you had years of drinking well not that way high school and started partying with friends and Brink they'd come over after school I pretty much started with hanging so out that peer them. pressure just, that social circle just kind of just hanging out just thought it was cool and we, we started young um, uh, but you know, it wasn't like, not like it was in the end. <laughs> That's for sure. That's, <laughs> Started it out was fun just and... more like, yeah, it was fun. Like, I mean, I did stupid stuff. Like as a kid, I look back at it, like, I mean, I kind of laugh at it, but I'm <laughs> glad my daughter didn't do any of it. But like, because I'd play quarters with her friends. Oh my gosh. I, was, <laughs> I would practice with soda like bouncing the quarter and practice downing it because if I didn't down the beer, they'd make me down another one. Oh my gosh. So I was like, I'm going to be able to down that freaking first class. Yeah. So I mean like, so, you know, just trying to be like my big sister and her friends, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think that's it's just like always circles back to somebody got us going and then we yeah. just like rode out just that. Just went like... with it. And, you know, I was always like now super awkward. Like I, <laughs> I keep looking like now, just, but, um, and you know, when I got older, when I was a teenager, you know, drinking, I just, I wasn't awkward anymore. I was able to do all the stuff that, you know, I felt confident. I felt like I could say anything, talk to anybody. So it gave you that thing, fake confidence. Oh yeah. Something I still have to work on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Eight and a half years later and I'm still going. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm... yeah, it doesn't go away as an adult. That's for damn sure. No, but yeah, it's a hard thing because so... we masked it for so many years. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you've got many years I on feel me. My face getting all red. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, I don't know if I answered your why, um, but yeah, I mean, that it. I don't know what. So, yes, what was your like aha moment? Like, was it your husband? Was it your kids? Like, no, was it you? Like, no. you wanted the change. Or did you get? Yeah, I mean, they tried. My daughter moved out. My, my daughter actually um, didn't talk to me for a while because of it. Yeah. Um, she tried. It's okay. Um, but you guys are fine now. Oh, we're great now. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're freaking awesome now. I love it. Um. And, you know, my current husband tried, my, my ex-husband, her dad, different father, oh. but um, yeah, so she left to go move with her dad. My husband, now that I'm married to, he didn't drink. Um, he, like I was saying, he, you know, the one statement I never understood was he says he drank enough in the military for a lifetime, he's good, and I'm just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't even drink enough for tomorrow, but all right. <laughs> Wait, did you guys meet but, after you got sober? No. Oh. No, I was drinking. And so, I, I mean, like, I 
I would always, I, I don't know if I could say drink normally because it was never really normal drinking. I thought it was normal. Yeah. You know, I went to work every day. I took care of my daughter. She went to school, did her sports. I was on the soccer board. You know, I'd come home, cook dinner, have some drinks while I'm cooking dinner. Typical. Go to bed, yeah. get up, do it all over again. So I, you know, I didn't think too much of it. I knew that I kind of was drinking more than maybe some people because, you know, it wasn't just like, you know, one drink while I was cooking dinner. It, it was, was the whole few. bottle. Or yeah. The whole, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so when I got together with my current husband, we, he didn't drink again. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll just drink less. Well, it, for me, it actually spiraled me in a totally different direction. Instead of drinking less, I started hiding it from him. Like as an alcoholic. Yeah, because he would give me shit for drinking. And he'd be like, you're having another one? Mm -hmm. Like, well, it's, yeah. Like, yeah. so I wouldn't want to have to answer that. So I would drink, like maybe have a few drinks before he'd come over or come home. And I'd be just like, then I'd have that one drink and then sneak off and have another one. And it, so it actually had the major opposite I feel like, like that's me. kind of the same with us. Jonathan would always be like, you're having another one? And yeah. then it would make me want to drink more. Yeah. Or like hide it. You'd hide it. Yeah. That's exactly like, what I was No, like. I didn't have anything to drink. But really, I was like already three drinks in. Yeah. And he'd be like, oh, why are you falling asleep at <laughs> seven o'clock? Right? You know, I'm like, so gosh. Oh, yeah. man. So it's that was kind of that spiral. So yeah, so he tried, you know, my daughter moved out. He tried giving me information and um he tried to leave me a few times but always came right back the next day like <laughs> it was just like this is it you have to stop and and then you know but um I don't know what it was that finally got me to be like yeah when I think back to how things were and um there's probably still a lot of guilt there mm -hmm. You know, I think of my daughter, and um, so all that still really kind of. <clears throat> so did you still did hits. you drink most of her like life? Life, <laughs> yeah. Because she's in her early twenties. She's twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah. So she's twenty three now. She's great. She hardly drinks. Not surprised. Um, but yeah, she's doing great. We have a great relationship now. Um, it, it took a while. I had, I was a year and a half sober before she even started talking to me. It was probably hard to like believe like is mom yeah. actually sober. I think so. Um, you know, I would show up to every game, you know, she played basketball, she played soccer, showed up to every game, text her every now and again, you know, just, Hey, no responses, but I just kept doing it until thinking she's gonna respond is she your only yeah oh. yeah I have she yeah she's my only daughter I have a stepdaughter <clears throat> who actually just just turned 24 so they're both um basically the same age and um my stepdaughter had no choice but to talk to me because <laughs> she'd come over <laughs> with her dad <laughs> But, you know, so it was cool. So, you know, she was really good about it. You know, she knew how well I was doing. And I was kind of like, okay, maybe it'll get back to, you yeah. know. <laughs> I feel like our kids, I think we'll always have that guilt, though. I think it's, I mean, my kids are still super young. So, they, yeah, I mean, they, so they, they witness things that they, you know, sh probably, probably shouldn't have. I mean, I mean, yeah. I definitely know I witnessed things as a child that I shouldn't have. I yeah. think going into that, I was like, I don't want my kids to. I don't want to have a repeat. Like they don't need no. to deal with that at all. I I I don't know what how how it happened that I actually you know got something the light just bulb. in your brain like yeah tweaked one day and you're like I'm done. yeah. So my husband had gotten me a bunch of information from our medical insurance to go get help. I did do um, and like an outpatient program okay. that was. I went, you know, every day for a few weeks, came home every night. Um, so that was 
that worked great for me because my husband was working graveyard and we had two dogs and two cats at home. So it's like, I'm like, I can't just, you know, go away, nor yeah. do I want to. I really didn't want to. But um, so that was actually, that worked out really well. The group that I was with was awesome because they it funnels in different people. And so I lucked out and had a group. We were all around the same age. We had all like a lot of the same things and a few of them I'm still good friends with. That's nice. I mean, we don't see each other because we all live in different states, but like, you know, we, you know, more like Facebook good friends, I guess, you know, see what each other are doing and comment. So a lot of people ask, like, what was your, like, like a lot of people still ask me, like, what was your aha moment? What was your, like, turning point? What made you decide to quit drinking? And to me, it's like, I guess I don't really have a definite answer. It's just one day I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. So yeah. it was kind of the same yeah. for you. But yeah. You were a little bit more lower to the ground I oh, guess yeah. I I was pretty far down it's I mean you you probably stopped when I was you know maybe a few years like you know no, I could I could see because I was lived. yeah because yeah. I was definitely you know I was I thought I had it all together and I was doing everything you know cooking dinner taking care of my kids yeah. but there were definitely nights where I was pretty freaking hammered or don't remember what you know even with thinking I had it all together, mm -hmm. kind of, so to speak. And then um, you had to get up feeling like crap and mm -hmm. still take care of them. I mean, they oh, were yeah. older that, or she was older than my kids at the time, but. Yeah, she still. was, but there was still, you know, you still wake up and go, I can't believe I said that around her or I was acting like that around her, kind of. One of the things that they remember and they're like, well, mommy did this. And I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> Can we Are you not? sure I did that? I don't remember, so it can't have happened. It, it was like it was just, you know, I was just, you know, being goofy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, I'm sure at first it was like nothing. And then as she got older, I'm sure she understood. Just like your kids are yeah. probably at the a good age where they didn't understand everything. So uh, Colton's pretty. Uh, pretty intuitive. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Emma is too, but Colton will tell it to your face. Like, Mommy, did you did this? Like, yeah. Well, maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. Maybe I should just quit drinking. Yeah. <laughs> but then I wouldn't quit drinking. No, I wanted to be a non-drinker for a long time before I did. And did and you keep? Did were there times where you would try and then you wouldn't succeed and then you'd go back down the same cycle, or was it just like you thought that you wanted to quit drinking and but you never actually tried to quit drinking until the day that you were like, I'm done drinking. I'm going to quit drinking. Pretty much. Like, it'd be like, yeah, I'm, I won't drink tonight. And then I'll be like, yeah, maybe I'll just have a drink, one drink. So it's like I never mm -hmm. did, like, okay, I'm going to be totally dry, you know, or whatever. It's just kind of. Because I think that's the other big question is, like, how many times did it take you to actually quit drinking? This, well, I mean, I guess I'm pretty much that was my first, like, true attempt Minus the few times of just saying, okay, I'm going to drink mm -hmm. less or I won't drink tonight. And then yeah. I do drink, but I never really was like, this is it. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to, you know, it's like, it's so funny. It's like when I think back, because all of this made me have to like think back all again. I'm like, how many times I would like sit there and go, <clears throat> I want to be that person. You know, like everybody's like getting dinner and stuff. I'm like, I want to be that person that says, no, I don't drink. Yeah. And I'm like, well, now but it's it nice. never was. <laughs> but now it's nice because you go to the doctor and they say, do you drink and do you smoke? And now it's like, check, check. Nope. No. <laughs> so, like, I the first time you could be honest. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> how, many, how many drinks do you have? Uh, just one a night. Yeah. <laughs> but now I hear Every day? No, not even every day. Maybe two or three times a week. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, because like even when I did do the, went into the program, <clears throat> you know, you meet with the, with the doctor and that was like the one and only time in my entire life that I ever admitted how much I was drinking wow. was to that person. I was just like... I mean, that's how bad I, I was like, you know what, I got to give it my all on this one because I honestly 100% would be dead by now if I kept drinking the way I was at the end. What was your drink of choice? Any, everything? Anything? Vodka. Vodka? Well, so I used to drink beer. I used to always be beer. And um, that's not as easy to just put in a tumbler. And oh, my God. I used it. to have like six bottles sitting on the counter. And I'm like, oh, shit. You know, it is. So um, someone was like, oh, yeah, you know, 
I forgot who it was. It was a friend or something. I was like, yeah, no, I just drink vodka because you could drink less. You don't get as, you know, you don't gain as much weight. Mm. It doesn't fucking matter. You're going to gain weight. Alcohol is horrible for exactly. you. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, okay. So I switched to vodka. I was like, you're right. You know, I don't have to drink as much. Well, that only lasts so long, too, because your body adapts to everything. Oh, I read somewhere that in the, like, there's five billion liters consumed in the world of like vodka is like the number one alcohol of choice as people put it in their water bottle yeah i mean <laughs> nobody's like, gonna know like you, know. you think you're the only one who thought of that <laughs> right gosh <laughs> and that it doesn't smell as a myth by the way it's mm. like it's a smell so horrible but yeah so i yeah i i was pretty bad off you know and it took a long time to get there you know i but so the like the cravings um did you like how did you overcome the the cravings the temptations like did you substitute anything like coffee or tea or um you know for some reason I drink like a shit ton of sparkling water yeah that's what we do and it's like that is what I always drink like you know I'll have water like now I have water with some BCAAs, but otherwise it's like coffee is sparkling water. Yeah. When I'm in an uncomfortable situation, I get sparkling water. It's just. That's exactly. I'm thinking that's it. <laughs> yeah. And that's a lot of people are like, well, how do you beat your cravings? I don't think I had cravings. It's just I want something different yes. in my hand while everybody else is drinking, like just so it's not as awkward. It's like I don't want to drink. No. But I don't want to like stand out. Like, yeah. I mean, I would stand out being the most wasted in the room but now like standing out being the sober one but at least have like that sparkling Something. water with a lime in it yeah and you're then, and i'm constantly i find myself just constantly sipping off of it too mm -hmm. jonathan will down like six club sodas at a restaurant <laughs> it is just like I'm probably another, another not too far one. behind actually <laughs> but that was yeah. me with drinks <laughs> totally it's a little cheaper yeah i know if then my husband um, he always gives me shit for how, he's like, how much money we spend on sparkling water, <laughs> but it's like, Yeah, it's, it's a thing. I mean, now my yeah. fridge is loaded with all different flavors of, like, sparkling waters and stuff, and I think it works. Yeah. And coffee. I know a lot of people, I always have to say, like, I know a lot of people have, like, negative things against caffeine, but to me, it works. <laughs> Why did you turn to alcohol, you think, like, past your teenage years was it to cope with stuff to mask pain or like just get through life like did you think that you needed to use it to get through life pretty much um or was it just your identity that's interesting um you know I did a lot of it was you know I was going to say social, but it's not quite social, but it's like it did. It, it gave me the social. confidence. It gave me, you know, like I thought it was more fun. I'd be more, you know, I could talk more because I'm, you know, very awkward, like right now, like I keep saying. But um, I'm an awkward person. And so too. it's, I just felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. It made me feel comfortable. I felt more relaxed. I, you know, would get up and dance if, well, yeah still kind of like it in a proper setting i would just do it like yeah. you know bust out dancing now or anything but um so it just really you know i've i felt like it i it's a depressant but i felt like it gave me energy like i was like ready to go if i had a drink in hand i was like yeah let's rock on let's do it yeah, um so that is kind of it i'm not even quite sure you know when i was home well, home drinking it's like who needs confidence when you're like cooking freaking dinner but mm -hmm. that I think became a lot of a habit like come home from work like I used to years ago and this is even before my daughter like when I, I come home from work I used to commute come home have a beer and a cigarette before I did anything yes you know, so I, I quit smoking when I got pregnant so that was even before that so it just kind of became like this is the normal thing to do is to come home from work, have a drink or beer or wine, whatever it was you wanted, and then cook dinner. Yeah. You know, I have to do homework with my daughter. Well, I better make a drink first because she's going <laughs> to yeah. drive me freaking batty trying to do this homework with her. Um, so I think a lot of it, it, it's kind of a twofold. Like I didn't have anything that I could really think of that and I've tried to explore I've explored you mentioned that your times. dad raised you guys yes do you and think maybe 
your child like was there like some underlying like maybe tr trauma that kept you holding on to alcohol there could be a little bit with that i know so um yeah because our parents divorced when we were young and um you know my mom was in the picture she lived out she lived in a, another city you know so i saw her like every other weekend but yeah he raised us he worked a lot he was very shut down so like when i grew up you know i was i was alone a lot when i was young so i think that also like kind of contributed to my awkward shyness around people um but you know i don't um I, I did ex have to explore some things when I first got sober, and I did, you know, brought up some resentments towards my mom um, that, you know, probably had a lot to do with it. Um, that was super hard for me to actually even address at the time because she had passed away. Um, you know, my one person that I was talking to, she's like, you know, she goes, you could be mad at somebody even though they died. Yeah. You know, she goes, it's okay. You know, yeah. like, but um, so. You know, there that could have a lot to do with it. There was no, like, you know, super obvious trauma that I went through. I think it was just a buildup throughout life. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I honestly, I always say, like, I feel like I lived several different lives in this lifetime <laughs> just because of how drastic everything has changed for me, like, from a kid to when I was a teenager with some the loser to being married you know and trying to do what I thought was the way you're supposed to be well I'm sure like know, and divorce didn't help like drinking I mean um I yeah you know I I was actually super glad to get divorced yeah. well but like <laughs> like was... obviously there was something that let like you there was something in you that wasn't happy yes so drinking helped mask drinking helped me while I was married so there was no excuse <laughs> afterwards. But Other I mean, than there's something that just kept me drinking. But um, so you thought that it made you happy? I guess it, and it did. Filled a yeah, void of some... it did. And when I was married to my ex-husband, it was definitely numbing to have to deal with him. I would drink um, until we got to the point where we were just living as roommates. So then that's when I was like. Looked at my daughter and I was like, I don't want her to think this is the way a marriage is supposed to be. So I was like, we're, so we called it, um, I called it, it hands, and then I just continued to drink though. So I don't really know <laughs> if it's the... But then you had a whole different, t like, then you were on your own, like, you know, raising a daughter. And I don't mean, I don't know if he was in the picture or not, but. He, yeah, um, he was, he tried to be more in the picture than he was when we were actually married. So, yeah, that's just, he was a Disneyland, your daughter, Disneyland dad. Yeah. 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 So. so, but, yeah, no, I, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I just, it's probably it was just a the way of life. and everything. It was just, it was such a big part of my life. I think that's, I think you mentioned that before, that it was just, like, part of my identity. Like, I drank. That's just not, you know, it was, I come home, I drink. You know, it's Saturday, it's four o'clock, I drink, or it's like, oh, it's a super nice day, let's go sit outside and yeah. have some drinks. <laughs> like, it's like you look forward to the drink, like there was nothing else to look forward to. Right, yeah. It's kind of funny, I've heard people say, like, it's, um, like, they felt like they lost a friend. I never really thought that, but when you think about it, it is something that is just always with you. Yeah, so it's, like, it's like your so-called best friend. Yeah, I mean, the habit. What was your hobby? Oh, drinking, I guess, was my hobby. Like, well, I mean, yeah. when people would ask me, "Well, what do you do for fun?" I drink. I drink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was like so embarrassing to like admit. And then now I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, like it literally was what like, you did. Yeah, yeah, as a hobby. Yeah, I yeah. So that's yeah, and you know, it it is one of those things because you. Are in a bad mood you have a drink you're happy let's celebrate and yep. drink you know you're sad oh i better drink and cry to this sad song or you know it's just became what to do and so your aha moment 
was, or like the day that you decided to quit drinking was the day that you quit drinking and you went to outpatient. Mm -hmm. How long was outpatient? It was a few weeks. It was a few weeks. I tried to go a lot, stay longer. Um, but they're like, no, you're ready to go. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. I, I think more, I was more scared to be alone because I was afraid I would drink if I did. Um, so I did go to, I did do, was in a 12 step program for a little while. Um, it was great at the time. It's what I needed at the time. Um, and so my husband would leave for work at like five o'clock cause he worked graveyard. So he'd leave at five, come home at like seven in the morning the next day. So he would leave for work and I would have to leave the house and go right to a meeting. So you else. stayed busy. I had went to, in the beginning. Yeah. That was, and then I'd come home, cook dinner, you know, had my two dogs, and it would be like, it. W I was so used to drinking. I think at around four or five o'clock, mm -hmm. that once I got past those hours, it was so much easier. Yeah, I don't. Know. So keeping your mind busy, doing something mm -hmm. different. I would. Yeah. Putting substituting alcohol with sparkling water, coffee. Pretty much. And it was just, and it took yeah. you a few weeks to finally, like, I mean, because I, th I always tell, told, tell people that it was like at the 20 to 25 day mark that I was like, I don't need this anymore. Like, right. There was absolutely no desire for it. Yeah. It, um, yes and no. Like I had no desire to feel as shitty as I did. Um, and I still don't. Like if I when I think of alcohol, I see people drink. I'm sure gonna feel so shitty tomorrow. Right? Like you know, and I'm just like so I'm being so glad that's being not me. sober now. Like life is obviously so much better. Absolutely, when I understand. Like alcohol has no place in my life right now. The way I live, the lifestyle I live, it has zero place. Um, I like I had breast cancer and I didn't have to drink through it. You know, so it was oh. like. Things like that, I look back. But on and did you know, like, like alcohol is one of the main yes factors of breast, breast cancer? cancer. Mm -hmm. Isn't that yep crazy? Sugar and alcohol. Wow. Yep. And I, I don't have any history of it in my family. I there was no. I don't carry the gene for it. And so it was so self induced almost. It was like yeah. They said there's just no, like, real reason. Like something that says this is it. But yeah, I think. So during the process of um, getting sober and you started feeling like so much better, was there any time that you were like, what if I just had one drink? No. No? No. I no, I was like, no. Because I knew, and I know myself so well, that I knew if I had that one drink, I'd be through. That's exactly what I tell people. I I'm like, it. gosh, if you get through the hard part, don't ever touch it again. Like, it's just going to take true. you right back. Oh, yeah. Because people does. are like, what keeps you from, what, like, what keeps you motivated, I guess? Like, because you know that life is better. Oh, yeah. You life know? is much better. Like, I, you know, I don't care what you need to, you know, go through. Like, I don't do the 12-step thing anymore. But some people, like, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Just do it and go through it. And like the first of everything sucks. Yeah. First Christmas, first New Year's, first birthdays, you know, all that sucks. But it's like once you pass, I always call it the first. Yeah. Once you get through all the firsts, you know, you're golden. Yeah. Like you Well, they say are. like a lot of people <laughs> relapse within their first year. And it's because like the holidays come up or mm -hmm. the birthdays come up or summertime gets here. And it's hard and people yeah. don't know what to do. And it's yeah. like there's yeah, and it's people don't like to talk about it. No, because there's such a stigma against it. Mm -hmm. People look at you back, and it's like, well, actually, because of what I went through, I am so much better and stronger mentally than you know I ever was or anybody else. Like, did you find so did you find a new confidence and like, and then you put yourself with more uplifting people? Like, did you find a whole different group? of people in oh, life. Oh, yeah. I have, well, my husband and I in general have like really, really hard boundaries mm -hmm. with people. I, I'm worse off than he is. Like I am like absolutely no drama. 
I can't be around people that are like controlling. I like we've we've cut people out of our lives, like not like you know you're dead to me, kind <laughs> yeah. of thing, but just like you know, yeah, no, we're we're not going to be around you. We're not going to hang around you. And it's I cannot have that drama around me. I can't be around you know anything like toxic people will bring you down. Yeah. And I have I have to stay away from that. I really try to stay grounded. Um, you know, I meditate probably not as often as I should, but I do because I do, I catch myself like spiraling, like, you know, I start getting that anxiety and I start, and then, so I have to stop and that's when I go back to meditating, remind myself that that's what I should be doing. <laughs> yeah. That's... Um, but yeah, no, we've definitely, I definitely, there's people I can't be around. We've had a couple of people that are like, oh yeah, let's. We're going out for drinks. Come meet us at nine o'clock. And you're like, well, see, uh, I didn't know that you didn't drink, and so every time Christina and I would be like, happy hour, and you're like, well, I might like show up. I don't, yeah, I, I mean, like, I didn't care about going. Yeah, you know, something like that to meet you guys was like totally fine. But I'm not going to show up to a bar at nine o'clock at night when everybody's no drinking. No, you know, going to a restaurant that serves food and alcohol, I don't trip on that. So, so you uh, never like got and. I want to use the word triggered, but like there's times and mostly in the beginning. Now I think I just don't have the patience for it. I just like we're out. But especially in the beginning, it was always like um, if, you know, my husband and I would go places and I tell him when I say I need to go, we need to go. Period. So that is There's something no that questions. I think a lot of people need to hear because a lot of people in the very beginning are struggling. They're like, I don't know what to do. And how do you get past it? And I'm like, you just do it. Like you yeah. set your boundaries and you don't go if you don't feel comfortable and or you just make an appearance and leave soon. Yeah. And, no, that's exactly And people it. have to respect, you know, yeah. your and, boundaries. And then it's like one thing I've learned is like you don't have to give people a reason. Like if people offer you drinks because some people, like I said, there's such a stigma. People don't want to say anything. It's like it's none of their business why you don't. Drink. But it's like you know, I don't these, want to. Literally <laughs> in this state, it's the, you automatically assume that they're of a religion if they're not drinking. That's true. So <laughs> that's I'm true. like, wait a second. Like that's true. More <laughs> people don't drink, but yeah. you drink coffee, so you're not you're okay. Yes, <laughs> so. yes. So I mean, I I've don't like I've been in those situations where I'm the one drinking. I'm like, hey, do you want a drink? And they're like, no, I don't drink, and I automatically assume. That's true. And that's true. Know. Around here, people don't trip yeah. as much. But yeah. so in I'm the like, state, I did when I when I lived in before. It was definitely like, not. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a thing as yeah. much as you same know, in Oregon. But, like I just it wasn't a thing. Yeah. So it's like no, and I, I think that was kind of the thing. It's just like, you know, just leave. Like honestly, just feel like gotta go. Or don't put yourself in the situation. Or don't at all. don't put yourself in that situation. Like you I'm, could avoid it. Like there were things that I just super avoided like, in the beginning of us quitting drinking. Like there was a couple weddings and like events, and I was like, I don't, I don't want to go. Like, yeah. and I felt bad. I did because I was like, you know, I wouldn't want people to miss my event like that. But I was like, I don't want to put myself in that situation. No. And if they don't understand or want to res- like respect that boundary. Or us quitting drinking, then I mean, whatever. Like that's, yeah, you know, it's not, it's not somebody then. you want to be around. Then, yeah, you know, that's how I look at it. Because it's like, you know, if you, if you are upset with me because I don't want to put myself in a situation where I might drink again or something, then you're not somebody who actually cares about me. Yeah, and I don't want to be in that position. And those are, those are the kind of boundaries that I have to set. And I feel like if you know, it's, I, I would be like. But obviously they weren't mad at you. But I'm just saying, if yeah. somebody was, I'd be like, all right, have a good life. Yeah. You know, so I just. Being sober, like now it doesn't matter having a small circle. Like when you're like drinking, when you're drinking, it's more of a, mm-hmm. I need to fill the void with all these like dr- other people that want to go drink. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, we don't drink. So yeah, I don't care anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't. Exactly. It's true. Because when you are drinking, it's like, yeah, more than bringer. Come on, let's all do this. And yeah. and then it almost makes it okay because everybody's doing it. We're all doing it and having a great time. Yeah. You know, it's what we do. We, you know, go camping and we all drink at 
as soon as we wake up, we crack a beer, or make bloody berries. Like, oh. uh, yeah. And then you're drunk all day long. And then you just wake up feeling like crap, just start drinking again all day long. And then you get home and you're like, oh, I can't do it. I can't put any of this stuff away. I just like, yeah, have, like, like you're so lethargic. And I would gain like eight to 10 pounds after camping from all like the water weight from oh, drinking yeah. and eating like crap the whole entire week. Yeah, because you're not drinking water. You're drinking yeah. freaking alcohol. I'm like, well, I'm putting like sparkling ice in my vodka. Like that's <laughs> water. <laughs> It's I mean, true. There's ice in the ice. There's water in the ice cubes. The one, right? Yeah. It was. Oh, it I remember was, those rations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all, everybody did it. But now camping, I can't imagine camping drunk anymore. It gives yeah. me more anxiety because Jonathan would be like, "Megan, nothing's changed." Because I would like get. I'm like, somebody's gonna get hurt. Like, I can't let them go that far. Like, stop riding your bikes <laughs> like that. And he's like, "They're doing the same thing they always do. You just notice it differently now." And I'm like, "Yes." Mm. Damn it. <laughs> so You're like I used to let them do that no they were so much more mellow with that right I used to let them go play with the mountain lions I mean really <laughs> no my gosh she was you, awful yeah, you were there with the camera you know so that would be like, like like hey okay. here kitty kitty yeah. <laughs> that, would, that would be me oh shit. yeah what is selective memory and can it play a part in relapse so selective memory like refers to the process where someone consciously or unconsciously chooses to remember certain events or details while forgetting others. This process can be influenced by various factors such as emotional state, beliefs, or past experiences. So with like that being what selective memory is, do you think how do you think that plays a part in relapse? I think that I think it definitely could play a part in it. Um, like for me, I have like in the front of my mind all the time, well, not all the time, but the majority of the time of how shitty I felt, how horrible that was, um, like just total despair. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing, like I don't think of the good ha ha times. I mean, we joke about them sometimes, but you yeah. know, it's like, I think of the shitty times. Yeah. And that's keeping me that, definitely needed to hold on to that in the beginning um but you know i Keyword, still word in the beginning in hold the on beginning to thinking of you those gotta, negative selective memories yeah you gotta remember all the bad yeah. times because i feel like a lot of people <clears throat> hold on to those selective memories of the like you for like the euphoric sides and the fun like well this helped me do this well it never helped you and it was just a short living euphoric like yeah. phase. absolutely absolutely 100 percent agree that and that's, I think that, and that's what people like, you know, it's like, that's what you chase. Like, is that fun, that mm -hmm. happy, like, oh, that was such a blast when we were doing this. Let's do this again. And um, so, yeah, for me, I had to just really focus on how shitty it was, how I felt. That's when, like, I still will look at, watch movies, <clears throat> and, you know, and they still glamorize alcohol a little bit. They like, do. And it's like, they show people, like, Not just a little bit. <laughs> That's true. Okay. <laughs> they show people partying all night. They wake up and they're like, oh, I feel like shit. And yeah. then all of a sudden they're like, Doof, let's go. Yeah. And I'm like, that is not how it fucking is. No. It's like you drink all night like that. You feel like shit. You are in bed all freaking day. Yeah. Like, it's like, stop making it be like a five minute, like, oh, my head hurts. And then you're off like happy go lucky. Off. <laughs> but you're suffering through it, even if you do play like, ooh happy go like yeah oh, and you know and you it's miserable look, and no matter what you do to your hair and makeup you still look like shit yeah it's like i don't care you do not look normal no like you did when you had a good night's sleep exactly so, but S you brought up um how movies and stuff glamorize alcohol do you do you notice that way more now mm -hmm. since you quit drinking oh yeah it's yeah. like literally everywhere because some people will ask like how do you how do you forget alcohol like, if somebody was to ask you, like, how do you forget alcohol? Like, how do you forget alcohol? I don't forget it. I, you know, it's, for me now, I'm like, it honestly does not have a place in my life. It should have a place in nobody's life. It, I agree. It shouldn't. Um, no, it definitely shouldn't. Yeah. So, but it's everywhere. And, you know, so it's kind of like, Yeah, I, I don't, like, yeah. I mean, I don't really forget it. I know it's there, and it just, it doesn't fit. 
so that's just how I am now. Mm -hmm. um, before, like in the beginning, I wouldn't have been walked down the beer aisle in the grocery store. Is we? I feel so. I feel like, like guilty. I don't know. I don't know. I feel guilty when I walk down it because I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Right, like, <laughs> right. You're like, I swear, I'm not looking to buy. Exactly. I'm like, I just had to go through this aisle real quick. It was the but... quickest way. <laughs> exactly, because I'm lazy and I just wanted to get there quicker. Yeah. Instead of going all the way around, but. I yeah. mean, like, there's just this sense of, like, oh, I'm watching a movie that has tons of alcohol in it. I'm like, wait, should I be watching this? Like, because people, like, ask, like, do you ever get tempted? Do you ever, like, you know, it's like, no, I I honestly don't. And I know I'm only, like, six and a half months into it versus your journey. But, I mean, I think, like, you, the same thing happened with me that happened to you. As one day it just, like, clicked. There was an off button and you wanted nothing to do with it anymore. Yeah. Like, okay. people are going to ask. I know they're going to ask. Well, how did you just flip that switch I I don't know I I think it was like like purely unconscious like it was not like a con like I have no idea what it was there was nothing different about that day that had me do it I what already, what di what um what month was it what August okay August well August 7th was my first sober day 2015 August 7th 2015 was my first sober day in years so you've been or sober almost as long as Emma's been I got pregnant with Emma in August 2015 really yeah see that's it <laughs> see it was Emma <laughs> that was it she did it but it was just I'm sorry I just like brought that back but because that was like probably the first time that I didn't drink in a long time because you found out you were pregnant mm -hmm. yeah that's cool. But that, yeah, that was like, that's so awesome. Yeah. So August 7th, 2015 was your first sober day. That was my first sober day, yeah. Because I think I forget to tell people, like, July 10th was, um, I guess, my first sober day. I was hungover, but July 10th was my first sober day. Like, July 9th was the last day that I was wasted. Yeah, my, my August 6th was my last drink. And it was right before I was starting that program. And I felt like shit. And I was shaky. So you yeah. did so you did have withdrawals? Yes. Well, yes. I was shaky. I was all I woke up shaky every time I started sobering up. I would didn't even really sleep. I kind of passed out. But um, yeah, and so entering that program because of how much I was drinking, I was scared to death to just stop. Um, because I was literally drinking 24-7. I was kind of like trying to survive because I felt so bad when I didn't have it. I was, like I said, I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. I was just drinking just to try to feel good, but I just felt worse. <clears throat> um, and so I, I was scared at that point to just stop drinking because, you know, a lot of things can happen. You can have seizures and this, and I was so afraid and especially being home alone a lot. So that was, um, but when I went to in to, you know, they're, they're doctors there and they put me on something. I don't remember what it was, but it was supposed to just kind of calm you down to help with the withdrawals. Um, there's a few different things that they give people, and that's just to prevent stuff like that from happening. Some seizures. So a lot of people will be like, they'll get, they'll attack me because, like, I don't mention like withdrawals and the like, the the horrible like things that can happen from quitting drinking. It's like, okay, well, your you level, live it. <laughs> your, yeah, your level was different than my level. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. and that's where everybody's like, well, you are an alcoholic. I was like, well, I never had withdrawals. I mean, I don't know. Like, You're, I guess, like, I was a problem drinker. What, there's different names for it, but, like, yeah, it just goes to show, like, you used it daily to cope with life, and you needed it, and then your body ended up, yeah, obviously needing it, too. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, from, like, from knowing you, you were kind of like, yeah, like, how I was, like, in the early days, like, this, yeah, I'm drinking too much, but I'm, I'm, Good. You know, like I felt fine, you know, every day when I'd go off to work and stuff. But at the end, I didn't. Um, but yeah, you it can get pretty dangerous. I've heard of other people going through stuff. That's why, like I said, I was scared to stop drinking because I was to the point 
at the end there, the last, I don't even know how long I was like that, a couple months. Um, months? Yeah, a couple months was that badly, you know. Okay. Um, and maybe not that long. I don't even remember, honestly. <laughs> it was probably less, it was probably a couple months, I don't know, but yeah, probably a couple months. Um, and I, I knew of other people that went through like, had seizures some people said like you don't they would just like they were some in a store or something like that and it happened and so th those are the things that freaked me out and i was alone a lot like i said because my husband worked my daughter had already moved out and went talk to me um and so I, I that's why i went on medication and that's why they put me on medication when they found out how much I was drinking each day. So pretty much being honest with how much you're drinking so you can actually get the help that you need. Yeah, yes. It was not, you know, three glasses a week. It was, you know, it was a lot. Um, and have you ever, like, lost a job because of alcohol? Yeah, yes, I did. I lost my job for because of it. Um, they which I was drinking on the job. I was hiding it. I was to that point where I would, it didn't start out that way. It started out, I felt like shit. So I'd have a little bit of to drink and then I'd go off to work and feel okay. Feel like shit because I'd come sober up oh. and then go back and that's the worst sitting there at my desk. So I decided, well, I'll just bring my little handy dandy water bottle with me instead. Nobody's gonna know. And nobody's gonna know, They they always know. Like, you know, you think you're so sly when you're drunk. Um, <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's like, you're not. You're not. Um, but, yeah, they did. My boss, she tried to give me um, a chance. I, I don't even know what. I did something. Like, she knew something was off with me, and she actually was like, you know, why don't you take a few days off and, you know, get get it together and then come back. And I was like, okay. And I, I used those three days just to be shit face drunk. It's party honestly. time. Yeah, I, I drank. My daughter went off to school, and I just watched TV and freaking. I was like that far gone. My you know mentally like this is okay. Um, and then the second time, I'm not sure. I was well. My husband kind of reminded me. I was like the my boss knew something was wrong, and I was out in my car, and I was on the phone. And I, I did, I had my water bottles. I always had a few, um, like, places, and I'd stash them because so my husband wouldn't find them. That's definitely a closet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I used to, like, be like, oh, I, you know, when I would thought I drank a lot, I'd be like, I'm not an alcoholic. Alcoholics hide their alcohol. <laughs> Alcoholics are bums. They don't, they get fired from their jobs. They weren't drink during the day. And it's like, oh, wait, I just checked all those boxes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was like, shit. Um, but, yeah, so she, she did. She called. She called my husband and was just like, something's off with her. You need to come down here. And he did. He came down. Um, we probably got into a fight. I was going to say, I'm sure that <laughs> we went over probably, real well. Yeah. <laughs> we <you> know. probably <laughs> argued. And, um, I think I went home that day. Like, she's just like, go home. And I went home and then they, and then I got the letter saying, you know, it's, <sighs> that is definitely it's with a heavy thing. heart that we have to, I'm just like, yeah, kind of figured, but. Um, it was hard because I have never in my life been fired from a job. Like I've been working since I was, you know, 15, 16 years old, mm -hmm. never got fired. I also never would have thought of drinking during the day like that or drinking on the job. That was like, even, you know, before I was like, no, you don't drink until after you're off work. You know, you don't drink till after you pick up the kids from soccer practice. Now it's yeah. like, then, you know, it just, it was bad. It was bad, and I literally pretty much rock bottom. I, yeah. I mean, you didn't, I, lose, I, you didn't I, lose your house and husband, but I, mean. I didn't lose my house, my husband. I did not kill anybody. I did not get a DUI. I mean, that honestly, I, I like I said, I'd probably be dead. Actually, I know I would be dead either, either because of my body shutting down because of you know because you're so little nutrients. and the alcohol consumption. Yeah. 
it was a lot for someone my size. Cause, yeah. You know, I'm small framed, so it's yeah. like, it's, and um, and you could probably yeah. out drink everybody. Yeah, and there was a time where I was like super proud of that. Right. Yeah. And, like I have these like commenters, and they're like, something to or like you out drink everybody. I'm sure you didn't. I was like, I mean, I didn't say I lasted longer, but I mean, I could out drink them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was cool. I guess yeah. I drank more than you. Like, but you were yeah. the cool one because you could hang out with the guys, right? Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> so annoying. Yes, like, when you think about it, you're like, you were cool because you drank. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Or you thought you were cool yeah. because you were drunk, but people are really looking at you, going, "You fucking dumbass!" <laughs> right? Like, whatever were you doing? Did you ever feel like you didn't know where you were fitting in yet, or like the sober crowd versus the drinking crowd? Yeah, because people looked at you weird if they were not drinking, but you were the drinker. But now, like, then you quit drinking, and then now you're like, like. Well, the- I kind of stopped hanging out with anybody that I was already hanging out with. So, like, um, when I got sober. So another key to success is eliminating. I really, yeah, and it was, you know, like um, <clears throat> a lot of it too was my si- my sister and I were really close. Um, and our relationship is fine now too, but I have like major boundaries with her. Um, but we always, we had like the same group of friends. We hung out together and it was usually like, we'd all, you know, girls night, we'd all go out together and she was part of it and we'd all drink and everybody would be drunk. Somebody's husband would come pick us up, you know, I was like, <laughs> and, and he thought we were all so funny because we'd be all drunk in the car singing and Oh, my husband dancing. never thought I was funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck, we gotta yeah. get Megan. Be right. Someone go pick her up exactly. off the ground. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but, but yeah, so like my sister and I weren't talking um, when I got, before I got sober, we weren't talking. We, she along with my daughter all just like like totally ousted like blacklisted me um so i so it was kind of easy to stay away from that crowd because she was part of it and so i was like but i did feel like everybody was talking about me i probably not because you know as i learned is like you know you're really not that important that everybody is like when they're not around you is going oh my god do you know what she's doing but you know but, but i can't, but it's hard because they that. can't they really can't talk shit about being you sober. for being for bettering yourself right and i think that's where a lot of like that jealousy comes in from people i think it's like right. oh she's bettering herself yeah. oh she's so stupid <laughs> it's so true like, it's so true it is true oh i'm sorry she's fit healthy and sober oh yeah, oh heaven you, you're you suck and wait, she's happily married, right? No, no, you gotta hate your husband too, right? It's like, yeah, no. Oh my god, it's gosh. true. It's like people, yeah. I, I think a lot of it's jealousy. It's but hard work. I mean, that's the thing. Is. Like, getting sober is not easy. Eating right. I mean, not everything is hard. Like, yeah. if it all came easy, we'd all be healthy, fit, and sober, and yeah. happily married. You gotta, I mean, you got to put in the work. Yeah. for everything. Yeah. You know, everything that you have to put in the work, you have to get uncomfortable. Yes. It sucks, but you got to go through it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I had, you know, at, at the time I was going to meetings and th- those rooms are very clicky. And I was like, I don't fit in with those people. I don't fit in with my other people. Like AA meetings? Yeah. And I was I like, had people ask me my thoughts on it and I can't give my thoughts because. I've never been to one and you'll probably, I'm not going to say never, but my social anxiety is real and groups do not, I'm not a group. I can't. Yeah. Oh, I never spoke. Okay. I never spoke. Um, but I did one time, one friend of ours got me to tell my story to everybody, but, um, that was. So outpatient. Uh, outpatient. And AA, like which one? I did. So I did the outpatient, and part of the outpatient thing is they encourage you to go to meetings, and they want you to try different ones, and apparently there's a lot of different ones. Um, you got your bougie ones and your bum ones. Just joking. Yeah, like, I, don't I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I was waiting for you to enlighten me. I'm like, really? Um, but, yeah, so it was like, so I went to meetings, and, again, like, I would go 
after you know my husband go for work i'd go there he'd come with me to them um it really opened his eyes a lot to the disease because he had no he he had no he had like you know but you don't know yeah and his like you know he he was around a lot of um people of addiction but in a different sense so you know he had didn't have the you know this point of view of it um and so he, he'd come to meetings and you know it enlightened him and it was great you know at the time i you know people some people thrive off of it there were some people in those rooms that have been there for like 30 years um one thing was super awesome is when i would go and i'd be like you know i'm like one month sober and you hear people going oh yeah i've been sober for 30 years and i'm just like oh thank god it can actually happen you know i have people that are just starting or haven't started or want to start and then i have some people that have been sober for 30 plus years yeah it's that is so super encouraging yeah it's like and people that have stopped in their 50s and 60s oh yeah and i was like wow you can do it like you couldn't completely reverse your whole entire life like you don't have to be fat and lazy you can actually (laughs) quit drinking lose the weight and get active again like your your life isn't over at 50. like i mean no it's not it's better not be i'm already (laughs) i'm gonna be 51 so it better not be over at 50. (laughs) see look quitting drinking helps with aging so it does it it, so does exercise yes exercise and nutrition like the best way, like the only like proven anti-aging. Because Jonathan would be like, "How old is she?" And I'm like, "I'm pretty sure she's mentioned that she's in her late 40s." But I said, "I don't, honestly, I don't know. I know she's probably in her 40s, but I don't think yeah. that she's like I never like I'll when you first told me how old you were. I was like, no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like there's no way. Well, thank you. Good. I like that. That's what I always would say too. It's like I don't care about my age in as long as someone doesn't look at me and go oh that's it i'm not much older than that can you imagine (laughs) being your age and looking like you're in your 60s that would suck if you would have quit if you would have kept drinking (laughs) i would yeah definitely you definitely it ages your skin so much what are three key factors to becoming sober and staying sober three key factors um Well, you have to want it. You you have got to want it. You can't just be wishing for it. It's got to be something you're ready to do and put in the work mm-hmm. to do and keep. Um, once you do get sober, like really, I would say like, you know, really hold on to that with yeah. your life. Like that being the most important thing in your life. And it's not selfish to take care of yourself and to, you know, put that ahead of anything, put that ahead of someone. Um, You had mentioned before about a wedding, you know, put that ahead of, you know, I need to stay sober to save my life is basically, and you're holding on to that, like, you know, that is your life preserver, is your sobriety. And with that, and, you know, I don't know if it's, the same kind of answer, but you know that's where boundaries really come in. Key and setting those boundaries, you know, not getting sucked into other people's problems, mm-hmm. um, and really just kind of setting the boundaries, keeping the peace in your own head. You know, like um, you know, I, I think you know, not it's I want to say like not judging, but you really it's like not as cut and dry as that. It's like, you know, honestly, your, um, you know, your sobriety is your main 100% thing that you need to focus on and do whatever. Cut people, I don't want to say cut people out of your life, that sounds so mean. But, um, but it's true, I mean. But you really gotta set boundaries yeah. and just kind of set the tone and, um, you know, don't get involved in other people's drama. Yes. Like worry about your own life, get your own life in order and, you know, kind of just really just let them, you know, do their thing and you need to really do your thing, get grounded. In the beginning, it was more so that I, you know, I couldn't have people around me who drank, you know, that's really the, 
an individual call, but I would actually. It's, I think, a huge one. Yeah, I recommend staying away from anybody who does. Don't have it in your house if you can. And, like, who cares if you skip that birthday party or Christmas party? Exactly. Yeah, that was part of the, that, you know, yeah, you need to take care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. And everybody else is second. Everything else is second. Um, You know, even, I hate to say it, even family. Yeah. They're second to your sobriety because without your sobriety, you might not have your family. Right. You might not have your job. You might not have those friends. Setting boundaries is huge. Surrounding yourself with like-minded, healthy people. Um, that That's also where fitness really came in for me, too. It's like it has zero place. I cannot get up early in the morning and go mm-hmm. train if I'm drinking. No. You know, it I'm has... surprised I did. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> And you and you worked out crazy. You were like a psycho. Oh, so miserable. <laughs> psycho. I was like, yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, join us. No, no, you have fun, Megan. <laughs> you stay over there. As I'm suffering through it. <laughs> but yeah, it's like really, you know, it's it's your circle of who you surround yourself with, too, I think is really a key point. Um and I mean, and honestly, I will, even when I did go to AA meetings, there were some people in there that were pretty toxic, too, that I was like, I need to stay away from you. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so it's you really kind of have to pick and choose who you're around. Um, it's that clarity that start, starts coming through with sobriety. Oh, it's, yeah. And it's super cool when it happens. Yeah. Like, that's one of the things that is, like, it's awesome. You could see... It in people's eyes. Like, it's like all of a sudden one day they walk in the room, you're like, ha, now you feel it. Now you know what it's like to be sober yeah. and to be clear headed and just to, doesn't mean you have your shit together, but you got. <laughs> so, it, go, going to that, I have a lot of people who are like, when do I start feeling better? And I have asked like a few therapists now, like, right. when does this pink cloud, like, there's this pink cloud. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, yeah. And a lot of people are like, my mental, like my mental health is still like my anxiety, my depression, nothing is getting better. I'm four months sober. Like, when does this happen? I'm like, that's a really good question. I said, I'm six and a half months and I'm still trying to figure that out. I said, it's shifted. It's right. different. But we've poisoned our body for s- decades. Like the repairing starts about six months and it's going to take a, like a least a year or two like when did you mentally start feeling better god i don't know if i still am no right? i'm just kidding I mean, it's a struggle. <laughs> I don't know. It's like... if you ask my husband probably not <laughs> right but... <laughs> no uh, you know it's i i remember i was in a fog for a long time i know that kind of fog you can't really remember things mm-hmm. like you, my memory still sucks now but that's for a different reason but um it's you know, I, I, I'm thinking around your six month mark. I mean, it's been a while, but it definitely it it kind of starts clicking, and it's it's really not until you, after you do some work and really kind of dive into what it is that probably you know that you were after with drinking. Like, you know, what were you trying to numb? What were you trying to escape from? Um, you know, even if it's not something that's like totally obvious. Like for me, there was nothing, nothing traumatic happened that I'm like, oh, I got, you know, that I started drinking to forget. Um, but, you know, you really got to dive into yourself. And that's hard, like hard truths about yourself yeah. and find someone you truly trust that you can speak those hard truths with. Um, cause I, I think until you get through that, there's always going to be that something that's going to want you to alter your mind. Like it's the quick fix, yeah. you know, I can't deal with that. It's too sad. So I'm going to drink and, you know, like now I, I personally won't take anything that's mind altering. A like, lot of people are like, smoke weed, take gummies. I'm like, I do not, I'm not. That's, that's just, not my go-to. I've never liked it. Yeah. I mean, it, for me, that's just shifting mm-hmm. to something else. Yeah. You, so, tra- you need to trade, a, like, you need to do a good habit, like, right? or a bad habit. Like, like, you don't yeah. know, go from bad habit to bad habit. You go the other way. Yeah. So it's like, if you're if you're using a substance to, cha- to alter your mood or the way you are, you know, feeling at that moment, then, you know, 
I don't agree with that. That's something I stay away with. I feel like you're not dealing with the addiction. You're not dealing with what the root problem is in the first place. Yeah. And sadly, it's kind of like you need to get past that root problem. And before you do feel better, I think that's just my experience. Maybe yeah. we don't know that we have problems when. No. And then, like me, I became angry about four months. I was like, where's this anger coming from? Past resentment. Yes. Emotions and, that come up yeah. that were numbed before. Yeah. And That's... my counselor was like, it's normal. Like, there's this, like, there's, like, this bridge. Right. And it's like, you're going to go all the way one side and, like, you know, and then you have to make your way back. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And you'll feel like, oh, I made so much progress. And all of a sudden, it's like, you're back down again. Yeah. And I, I think that's just life, and it's just, like, the lessons that you have to go through and learn so that you don't keep repeating it. Once you get through that hurdle and figure it out and learn that lesson, and that's like, okay. Then you'll hit smooth sailing for a while, and then you get hit with something else, and it's like you kind of have to train your mind how to deal with it. I know for me, I would have a drink, you know, yep. and then I'd forget because then I'd be off on something else that I wouldn't give a shit about, or I'd be like, Overly pissed or overly emotional because of the alcohol. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we one or the two. So it didn't work. But I mean, that's that's kind of like how I feel with alcohol is it's or any kind of mind altering substances. That's what it's doing. It's going to block you from whatever the root cause is in the first place. Yeah. So I guess that would be one of the top three things is don't go chasing something else. Yeah. You got to put in the work. You got to do it. You like, like I said, it's just because I, I know myself. It's like once I get that like ah feeling from something, I'm gonna be like, oh, I want to feel like this all the time. Yeah. And then so that's why I personally stay away from it. So you've not taken a sip of alcohol since you quit? No, not a sip. Good job. No, nothing. No, I don't want to. You can't. No, you can't. no. I I know myself. Like it'll. Well, yeah. I like to say that it would feel really good and I'd want to continue. So that's why I stay away. I know a lot of people are going to ask because your husband does or doesn't drink, but he still can drink once in a while. And people are going to ask, well, is your husband sober or and how does that affect you? Like if he does drink, he doesn't drink at all. Okay. Yeah. But like when you guys are like out and about and like, no, he doesn't drink any alcohol at all. Yeah. Do you think that if he, drank alcohol through your sobriety journey it would have been harder for you yes I do yeah. I absolutely do and I, I I have we have some friends who are sober and their spouses still drink and they have it in the house and one thing I say get it out of the house absolutely get it out of the house and I feel like if your spouse is gonna drink then you know let them have a drink somewhere else but yeah, I, I couldn't be around it at all at first. Now I just, I don't want to. Like, if I'm around some people and they want to have a glass of wine or something. I like, now care. I, like, look back and I'm like, man, I've had a margarita, like, when we went to lunch that one time. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> sex. I had no idea. Oh, I don't care. See, I don't yeah. care if other people drink. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to put myself in a bar. Yeah. Um, I do, like... For, not because I want to, but when I am sitting in like a bar or something, I do find myself just staring at the, like all the alcohol on the thing. Well, how can you not stare at them? They're all bright oh, and bet. like lit up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's like, but no, I, you know, um, but definitely that is one of the first things would be to get it out of the house. You know, one of the things it's like changing your habit, you know, because it is a habit. Yeah. You know, like I said, I'd go home, make dinner, pour a drink before I made dinner, and you just sit there and have a drink. You know, it's like that's the habit. That's the routine. So you got to get out of that routine. I really appreciate you being here. I have not been able to get a female on camera with me. <laughs> well, thank you. And this I think is huge for me. <laughs> you. And I think it's going to bring a lot of perspective to a lot of people that, like, you can help. I mean, almost a decade. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, it's pretty freaking awesome when I think about it. Yeah. Like, honestly, I never thought I'd be here. But thank you. I mean, this, like I said, proud this, of yourself. this is huge. Like, I, as you know, I don't, I, I don't usually 
talk about it. I don't put myself out there for this, so I'm doing this for you. And I appreciate that. I was like, oh my gosh, Tasha's gonna be here. Like, yeah, no, I no, but thank you, and that is why I'm doing it because, yeah, you know, a lot of people don't talk about it, and so I think it's it needs to. Like, you're not alone. I mean, I didn't want to ever get on camera. Jonathan's like, just do it, and I was like, I don't want to talk about my like that. How embarrassing. Right. 300,000 views later, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I'm helping people now? So, yeah. like, having you here and, like, another, you know, hard story to tell, like, it helps. You're going to help thousands of people. Like, Thank you know. You. Thank you. You never want to talk about it, but, no. like, now it's out there and you'll be surprised at how many people you actually help. And that's, like, even more benefit. Like, even, like, makes you even more proud to be sober. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's that's exactly it. It's like, okay, as long as I'm helping somebody, you know, somebody out there is going to get a takeaway from it, then it's worth it. It's not hard, but getting sober wasn't easy either. No. Or, I mean, it's and it not, wasn't sorry, easy being drunk not, either. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy talking about getting sober, being sober, or your past stories, but, you know. Yeah, but no, it definitely. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And I'm going to have lots of questions for you, I'm sure, so. That's okay. <laughs> Just don't put me on camera again. <laughs> <laughs>